Hey gang, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the spectrum of from fragile to resilient to anti-fragile. So in traditionally, we, we tend to think of, of the opposite of fragility, uh, of breaking under pressure, of breaking under chaos, as the opposite of fragility is um, resilience. And um, while that can be correct, it, it sort of doesn't go too far. It sort of sets a low bar because uh, resilience the, def the, the, the working definition of resilience that I like and that has been popularized by an author, uh, Nicholas Taleb, um, an author of a book called Anti-Fragility, um, that resilience is the ability to withstand chaos. That like if, you, if chaos gets thrown at you, if, if like there's a storm, if you, get, like, th if you get hurt or if you get a little bit of sickness, you can not get injured. You can, you can bend, but you won't break under that chaos, under that pressure, under those stresses. And... Uh, While well, that is a pretty good way of thinking, of, uh, it's good to think of, of fragility all the way over to uh, resilience, it sort of sets the bar pretty low because if you break under pressure, that is, you know, you're, you snap in half. And if you, if you withstand that pressure, if you withstand the, the, the tension and the stresses of life uh, and you don't break, that's, you know, that's great. But then this, there's this idea of anti-fragility or this term that has been uh, coined by Nicholas Taleb. Uh, and this idea of anti-fragility is that you... When, when stress comes at you, when, when chaos comes at you, you not only don't break, but you become stronger. That, um, that this system, that this person, that whatever you're describing, this anti-fragile thing, gets better, more, more robust with stress. That it actually increases its ability to, be, to withstand future stresses. And let me give you a few examples. So uh, we tend to... So an, an something that's anti-fragile is let's talk about a kid. Like a kid, if you're if you're a child and you're running around playing on on, on a playground, you can fall down a flight of stairs. You can hit your head on uh, maybe not your head. You can you can like fall off of a playset and you know bounce up and keep going. And you know you, that that experience of falling of 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 um, you know not necessarily hurting yourself, but you know not doing awesome stuff that will make you better because next time you know what to do your body knows how to react to the stress of falling of of, of uh knows how to like brace itself as you tumble um and then as you age you know pro probably in your teens high school age uh maybe even college that's when you start hitting resilient that's where you know if you fall down a flight of stairs you're you're not going to be you're not going to you're not going to bounce up like you were in a kid uh but you aren't going to break a hip and be uh wheelchair bound you're probably just going to be hurt for a little while you can probably bounce back maybe you got a bruised knee or something for a couple of days but you're going to be all right and then as you age as you hit middle age as you hit the 40s as you hit uh as you age you know into um you know, like in the 60s, 70s, that's where you hit fragile. That's where you start worrying about situations where if you fall down a flight of stairs, your lifestyle might be entirely compromised because you're unable to, you know, your hip breaks, your femur breaks, large bones like really can't handle those stresses. And it's an unfortunate decline in your ability to be anti-fragile, but it's sort of, that's the natural life path of most people. And it's not necessary. It's not necessary. We can stay. We stay anti-fragile if we allow ourselves to receive those stresses of life. And it's not necessarily that it's bad to be fragile, but it's bad to think you're fragile when you're in fact resilient, or it's bad to be think you're fragile when you're in fact anti-fragile. You know, you see kids um, running around on on the playgrounds, but they're they're not allowed to play. They're not allowed to run around, and climb on things, and they're not allowed to fall. And the, the, the stress of falling makes them more resilient, makes them more anti-fragile, more uh, robust when they fall the next time. But if they're never allowed to fall, they're un they're, they're, that their body doesn't receive that stress, and they may be resilient, they may be fragile because they don't receive the stresses. And it's a, a natural... It's a natural thing to want to protect uh, uh, somebody or a system or you know a pet or whatever from the stresses of life. But by re by removing those stresses that make that make the system actually stronger, you reduce its ability to um, in the future. You 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 trade you trade uh, stress and calm. You you trade um, steadiness now for weakness later. But in, in searching for a fragile system or when you are but when you're 
looking for anti-fragility, you're, you're accepting chaos now for future calm, for future stability. And it's where, where do you want that stability? Where do you want that chaos? Do you want that chaos in the future or do you want that stability now? Do you want that stability later or do you want that chaos now? It's a very, it's a tough balance because you're sort of, um, it's sort of anti, it's, 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 you know, an idea that is a little bit hard to internalize, but it's a really cool idea. I highly recommend this book, Anti-Fragility, uh, by Nicholas Taleb, um, and it's, you know, it's sort of changed the way I think about things, and it's, uh, it's uh, how do you approach a system, like, you know, the stock market is pretty fragile. It, it can take some stresses, but after a certain point, it breaks, um, but there are certain systems, there are certain, you know, groups, teams that are anti-fragile, that, you know, if, a, if a, a close-knit team gets stressed out by the world, you know, you know somebody, somebody gets sick, that, uh, you know, the, the business starts collapsing, but the, the team pulls together, gets stronger, gets tighter-knit so that they can um, then go from that stress to a higher point in the future. And that's something that's, uh, that I think about a lot, and I think you should consider as well. Um, I hope that, you know, maybe you start thinking about things in terms of anti-fragility rather than just resilience, because, you know, resilience is awesome, but it's a low bar. Let's set the bar pretty high. So I hope you like this. Enjoy.